is a recording of this year's virtual residency fair. We'd like to take the time to thank the programs that volunteered their time to present to this year's applicants. This year's PMNR Scholars Virtual Residency Fair is supported by PMNR Recap and Ultrasound Guidance. PMNR Recap is the leading resource for your physiatry board preparation, clinical preparation, audition rotations, and beyond. PMNR Recap offers 35 hours of review videos, hundreds of review questions, and oral board cases to help you become the best physiatrist that you can be. Head to pmnrrecap.com to learn more. Ultrasound Guidance is the innovative new on online ultrasound learning platform that gives you instant access to expert instruction. With rapid scans and complete scans of every joint and peripheral nerve, Ultrasound Guidance is the perfect way to jumpstart your MSK ultrasound learning. Visit ultrasoundguidance.com to learn more. Hey everyone, can you hear me? Oh, my name's Allison. I'm one of the two presidents at UW Human Art Program. Um, I see my co my co chief Matt has just turned on his video as well. Um, so we're going to start off with a quick PowerPoint presentation. Um, I think Michelle is here as well. Um, I'm just going to share my screen. Uh, we're going to run through the presentation, and we'll have time for questions. Um, All right. Yeah, so welcome to our event of the UW Seminar Program. Uh, uh, here's some pictures of our awesome leadership uh, Dr. Hodoff, our program director, Dr. Delaney, and Dr. Mullen, our associate program directors, and our longtime program administrator, Karen. Um, and here's some pictures of us as well. Um, my co chief and I, I'm Allison. Um, Matt and Michelle are my co-chiefs. Um, we also have a resident wellness committee who you'll probably meet during a recruitment season um, who are all our threes and are uh, involved in planning wellness events and doing recruitment events for applicants. Um, quick facts about our program. We're a large program with 30 residents in total. We have a lot of DOs as well as NPs. Oh, we're a hospital program at four different hospitals. Um, the main EMRs that we use are Epic and CPRS at the VA. Um, we have 28 days off of flexible time between vacation, professional days, and sick days. Um, our residents plan an annual retreat to Whistler Mountain. Um, moonlighting is allowed in the R3 and 4 years uh, with PD approval. Um, and we are part of a resident and fellow union um, that is a UW-wide union and provides a lot of benefits. Um, and here's just some snapshots from our residency website where you can get more info about some of that. Um, here's kind of an overview of some highlights in our program. We have a great breadth of training experiences, which we'll get more into later in the presentation. Um, we're super family and pet friendly, and a lot of our residents have started families during residency. Um, as I mentioned, we have a large class size and a uh, strong camaraderie between our residents. We have a lot of fun wellness events. Um, we have good balance uh, of autonomy and support with our all-star uh, attendings and faculty. Um, uh, I mentioned the union, and we have an awesome board review course, and we are located in beautiful Seattle, Washington, and we love our city. Um, some other hidden gems that you might not see in brochures that we like to talk about are um, we do not take admissions after 3 p.m. on weekdays at most of our sites. Um, we don't do weekend admissions, just weekend rounding. Um, we do a lot of uh, easy trading or selling of call um, between residents. Um, we have flexible vacation time, as I mentioned, can take uh, a vacation in any size block that you prefer at any time of the year. Um, we do home call and we don't do 24 hour calls. Um, here's a snapshot of our inpatient uh, and operation kind of schedules. Um, most holidays we have off, um, even in PGY two year, you'll only work a maximum of one major and two minor holidays. Um, and most weekends are free, even during the most busy year, which is PGY two year, you only work about one weekend and uh, one call stretch per month. Um, and less during your later years. Um, and then here's, here's another uh, rundown of our different training sites. Uh, we are, do our inpatient rotations at Harborview, which is a big trauma, level one trauma center, seeing a lot of SEIs and TBIs. Um, there's a main UW hospital where we see a lot of medically complex rehab. 
there's a dedicated SEI rehab and general rehab at the VA. Um, and we do three to four uh, blocks of pediatric rehab at Seattle Children's. Uh, we have a wide variety of outpatient clinics, uh, neuro rehab clinics, including some more specialized ones like ALS and MS, um, some great sports and spine clinics, and also a sports clinic at the UW Husky Stadium. Um, we wrote safety pain clinics, AKT clinics, cancer rehab, and we do get to, to uh, do a lot of uh, floral and spine procedures in those pain clinics, um, as well as ultrasound guided uh, procedures. Uh, in the sports clinics and, and Botox injections, doctor pills, et cetera, in the, the neuro rehab clinics. Um, this is just a, a nice <laughs> screenshot from our, our website of the different centers um, that I already kind of mentioned. And then if you didn't know already, uh, Grey's Anatomy is uh, set at Harbor View Hospital. So that's a little look inside that. Our lives are not exactly like that. <laughs> um, and, uh, here's a look at some of our didactics. Um, we have a well-structured didactics program. Uh, we do didactics during protected time on Tuesdays and Thursdays, so attending covering our pages for inpatient and consults. Um, we have structured blocks of topics like MSK, neural rehab, here's a um, EMG, ultrasound, musculoskeletal ultrasound. Um, we also have throughout the year department of MSK grand rounds, quality improvement uh, sessions and journal club. Um, and everyone is enrolled and has protected time for a four B course at the end of PGY4 year. Um, and if you didn't know, living in Seattle and the Pacific Northwest is amazing. We have beautiful nature that's easy to drive away from the city. We have three national parks in the state. There's a picture of us at Lake 22. Um, so um, I think Lake 22, oh, there's a lot of beautiful alpine lakes. It might actually be a different one, <laughs> but uh, yeah, lots of uh, fun events in the city, um, collegiate and professional sports teams, um, art, music, concert and festivals in the city. This is us at a Jason Mraz concert, um, a great culinary scene, breweries, vineyards. Um, we like to emphasize that not everyone is super duper outdoorsy. There's a lot of fun things to do in the city um, and fun things to do other than hiking <laughs> and backpacking. Uh, here's some pictures of that, of people kayaking, watching sports at a bar, going snowboarding and skiing, um, just hanging out at breweries and parks and whatnot. Um, we get a lot of questions about where residents live. Uh, we all kind of live within 30 minutes of the hospitals, but um, all over, there's a lot of uh, different neighborhoods in Seattle with different flavors. I live around the Green Lake area. A lot of people live downtown in the Cap Hill area. Um, but yeah, people live all over. Um, there's a lot of leadership opportunities within the program, and um, many of our residents are part of national committees. Um, as I mentioned, we have a wellness committee. We also have quality improvement um, and diversity, equity, and inclusion committees. Um, this is a picture by Dumpling Mike that we have with our uh, EDI committee. Um, a lot of volunteer opportunities for sport coverage and in the community. So. Um, covering marathons, Ironman, uh, and some adaptive sports opportunities with Outdoors for All, Seattle Adaptive Sports. Um, some up and coming things in the program, we're starting different residency tracks. We're starting an education track this year with monthly workshops and uh, an education project. And we're working on some other upcoming tracks like research, innovation track, and leadership plus option tracks. Um, here's a list of some of our awesome faculty who are nationally renowned, um, such as our new chair, Dana Friedley, who just became our chair this month. Um, she has been the editor in chief of PMR, aka the Purple Journal, uh, for many years. Um, our previous chair was uh, Peter Esselman, who just stepped down and was a past president of AAPMR and our, our beloved chair for many, many years. Um, we have people like Stephen Burns, who is a um, major director uh, in the SCI field. He's the director of our SCI series. He uh, did a lot of uh, pioneering the uh former chair of the, the kind of Asia Society. Um, and many uh, past presidents of national societies, team positions for the Seattle Seahawks and, um, and many, many more. And, and yeah, we have a wide variety of fellowships as well at UW, amputee care, um, brain injury, he's, uh, some you may not have heard of like quality improvement that are more unique to our program, sports medicine, um, neuromuscular and others. Um, 
And uh, in terms of where our graduates go, this is the last graduating class. Many of our graduates go straight into practice, um, but this class uh, went into all went into fellowships, including spinal cord injury, pain medicine, sports and spine, cancer, and sports. Um, here's a few more slides with graduating photos, uh, other places that people went, spine, spinal cord injury. Um, and yeah, uh, long story short, we have a lot of. Uh, Go into a lot of different fellowships across board and, and that's well. Um, and here's some more info for y'all to check out um, our residency website at pmrresidency.uw.edu. Um, here's all of our chief residents' uh, emails if you want to email one or all of us with more questions after the session. Um, please follow us on Instagram to see fun. Uh, pictures of our residents and wellness events, uh, like this screenshot here. We're at, at UWPMR and at UWPMR.us for just pictures of people fest. Um, there's also dedicated websites for UWCME, um, as well as our guest fellow UDN, if you want to know more in general about UW. And yeah, there's some more fun pictures um, and we'll open up for any questions. Oh, we got a lot of questions. Um, Norman says I oh has already been answered by we've been trying to answer them as <laughs> as they came up but if oh, any other guys. questions or, or need any thing I'm Michelle I'm one of the other chiefs I'm reading through the questions now, but if anybody hasn't had their questions answered yet, please uh, feel free to turn on your microphone and or camera. Yeah. And uh, going back to Kate's question just about the inpatient rehab units, I think if you pulled most of our residents, they would say they love having inpatient rehab attached to a hospital system because it just offers extra support to our patients. We're not having to like always transfer out to get a scan or um, as things come up. And so it allows us to keep patients kind of on the unit and getting the rehab they needed, um, which can be really helpful. With that being said, I think on some of our inpatient rehab units, the acuity is a little higher than at other places around the country. At least that's what I've experienced talking to other people, specifically at Harborview, the major trauma center. But like Michelle was saying, it's it's nice when you have all the other like allied services in-house too. So you can call medicine or you can call surgery or somebody if you if you need them while you're on call or or during the day. It's nice because otherwise you have to call 911. It's different if you're at a standalone facility. Yeah. It also allows us to do home call, um, which is really nice. So uh, because we always have a code team in the hospital, we can be at home at night. And I would say, you know, on during a home call stretch, maybe one night out of your stretch, you're having to go in, but most nights are pretty quiet, which is why we can do home call. If it wasn't sustainable, then we wouldn't be able to do it. So, and then this question, I think just came in about geographic ties and signaling. Gosh, I, I'm not sure. I think it's still so new. I, I think we kind of take a holistic look at applicants. Um, and so, I think if you have an honest, true geographic tie or signal to the area, I think that's fine, but I don't think it makes or breaks anything. Yeah, I think we'll probably be making more announcements specifically about that as we get further into recruiting season. Faculty making official announcements about that. Yeah. Uh, yes. So do you feel like you have a good exposure to MSK topics and procedures? I definitely think so. We are definitely like a see one, do one, teach one model here. You're working one-on-one -on -one with attendings and you rotate through the rotations typically more than once. So you're getting um, a lot of 
hands-on experience with the attendings or getting comfortable with your skill set and growing it each time you do the rotations. And so uh, we definitely foster a lot of independence. We have plenty of residents that go on to do general rehab practices where they incorporate ultrasound and um, EMG and uh, procedures into their um, into their careers and have no problems going straight into train or I'm sorry, straight into jobs and not doing a fellowship. Okay, I'm getting lost in the comments. Yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of questions. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to try and go from the top. Uh, Austin asked if a geo applicant is eligible for interview if they've taken step two without step one. I'm not sure specifically. I, I haven't yeah, I, th I honestly think probably because we definitely do a more holistic look at applicants. Um, but I, that would be something I would just email our um, program coordinator about and she'll have more of those answers as a nitty gritty about that but I think generally we take a look at everyone that applies um didactics virtually so our didactics we have a really unique didactic structure I know Allison touched on it but our didactics are all attending led so we're not having to like scramble or like prepare lectures for one another all of our lectures are being given by um, faculty that have an immense background in the subject matter um, and then they bring yeah. in outside speakers as well we are a hybrid of in-person and virtual lectures so I think it would be pretty difficult it, like our visiting students attend uh, didactics, but I don't think that they're open to the general public. Um, they also are protected, which is really nice. So our attending sign in and um, cover pages during that time. Does the medicine service share management with the inpatient rehab patients or is PMR primary? We are primary, so we're our own individual rehab unit in the hospital. Um, but that's not to say like if we have questions or if a patient has some medical needs, like we constantly have other specialists um, consulting and following those patients along as well. So they just act as consultants um, and we stay primary. When is your open house? Um, that is a great question. I would just follow our social media. We definitely will be putting dates up there as we get them in our website as well. Um, I apologize, we don't have dates right now. Um, four minutes, okay. Uh, I guess I can elaborate a little more on the MSK. So we have a lot of opportunities outside of um, just our general rotations for that as well. Matt is actually one of the uh, people right now that um, helps us organize a lot of adaptive sports experiences in the community. We volunteer at all of the big sporting events and have a lot of um, faculty support for doing that. We also have rugby or like the professional rugby team, um, high school football, you can cover uh, I think one of our residents was going to some college hockey, um, college rugby is also an option. Um, we are at a D1 school, so there are some opportunities there as well to be on the sidelines. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, go ahead. Do you want to take this one, Allison? Yeah, or? <laughs> oh, no, I, I mean, I think we are very um, receptive. Um, our our First of all, our program takes our feedback on uh, on all of our didactics very seriously. Um, and we also really encourage resident driven uh, changes to the curriculum. I think um, some of our residents were really involved in some of the like procedural didactics this year. Um, Part of the education, the idea of the education track is that uh, everyone in that track creates an education project that um, is planned to be incorporated into our uh, curriculum or didn't um, community engagement opportunities. 
um, yeah, I mean, I think the community engagement is mostly like whatever residents want to do and, and the program is uh, good at connecting us with any of those. Um, like I've been involved with the Brain Injury Alliance and a lot of people like Matt are, is involved with adaptive sports uh, um, community engagement. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think they do a ton of stuff, um, especially with wellness initiatives. So like starting this last year, we now have like carved up time every quarter for PGY2s to have a half day off of clinic um, or inpatient where they get covered coverage from attendings and upper level residents so that they can go have debriefs because we recognize that like a lot of stuff happens on inpatient rehab and we want to give them space to be able to kind of uh, debrief about how things are going, especially during our most um, inpatient year. Um, so that is, is something that was resident driven and um, faculty and program director supported um, yeah. that just started and we're continuing it this year because it was really successful last year. Uh, how many residents? So we are eight, eight, 11. So I think this upcoming year will be a class of eight because I think we just matched a class of 11. So three categorical and then five advanced positions. Oh, and uh, Matt yeah, and I both did the categorical. Yeah. So if anyone has questions about that, feel free to shoot us an email um, with a, always happy to answer questions. Anyone have any last minute questions? Thanks for waiting up for us. I know it's super late on the East Coast, so. <laughs> All righty then. Well, thank you very much, UW. We appreciate you guys. And thank you everybody for joining.